Howdy again. It's Tubal Cain, your YouTube shop teacher. And I just returned from another auction, and I want to show you what I scored. And I wasn't so lucky on prices today. I spent about $530, but 30 bucks of that or so was um, my wife's uh, expenditure. And she found a nice box of towels, uh, bath towels. She said she was getting low, so she got a good buy on some lately used towels. So I've got a trunk load here that I paid uh, a king's ransom for. I'm going to pull it out and we're going to go through it box by box. Now if you don't want to see all the detail then now is your time to back out of this video. But everything fit into the trunk for a change but there's still quite a bit of weight here. Now let me clip or move real uh, quickly to a clip at the auction site itself just to show you what the general lay of the land is at an Illinois auction But I suspect it's not a whole lot different than it is in other areas Some junk some good stuff I'm still at the auction house I'm done buying but I bought several nice job lots. Pretty windy out here. But here in Illinois, this is what a typical auction looks like. And I'm pretty well loaded. Got a lot of tools. All right, I'll see you at home. What I bought today probably only represents 2% uh, of what they sold, but there weren't a whole lot of tools, and this is primarily all of the tools that they had there today, other than some other junk dispersed and antique tools, but fortunately this was on the first rack, so I could have left by 10 o'clock, but of course I didn't. So you can see here some of these things as I lift them out of the trunk. Oh man, that's a heavy box. Oh jeepers. That's heavier than all the rest together. A lot of tool bits and taps and iron in that particular pile. And when I put this up, of course, you're going to see a stare at box. If that doesn't excite you, then there's something wrong with you. There's kind of a heavy box too. The funny thing is that some of the stuff that was at this auction was stuff that I left at the last auction. I just uh, didn't have room for it and I saw no value in it and now I had to buy it back. So that rather sickened me, although most of the stuff wasn't too good. But there was some of that Westlock stuff that people didn't take with them, just got recycled. I thought they threw everything away, but nah, not too much in that box. Sometimes I had to buy a whole tray just to get one item. And these trays vary anywhere from $2 to $50 or even $60. Quite a few indicators today. I'm not real sure why I bought this and I had to pay plenty for it, but here's another height gauge and it looks like it's, well, it's 25 inches. Which really, I suppose, means that it's 24 inches, but it's a, it's a vernier, it's not a dial. Came in a nice fitted case. Another box with some indicators. And yet some more indicators. This, I think, they dumped out the bottom of the toolbox or a drawer or something. And I, I don't know if the man passed away or, or not. Another miscellaneous box. Well, that fills up that cart. I got one more cart. You know what, I couldn't find an empty cart, but uh, looking into the trunk here, I got several more boxes and there's some miscellaneous wrenches. I really only bought that because I wanted this little jack and 
Not sure why I wanted that little guy. But in this tray, there are three Hewitt. Well, we'll go through that later. This tray. Miscellaneous, nothing real great. But here's a heavy box. You gotta move the camera for that. And in that, a lot of cutting tools, mainly taps, dies, reamers, possibly, I'm not even sure what. Now, if this interests you, or if I sparked your interest, stay tuned as I go through each and every flat slowly and methodically for my own purposes, as well as some of you enjoy this, especially if you're in areas where you cannot go to auctions or garage sales. So stay with me. Some of this stuff will end up on eBay, the duplicates, because I just have to buy a job lot to get a few things that I want. But there's a lot of machinist items here. Virtually all of this is machinist items. So you guys that are, have machine shops and that might get a kick out of this. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a few minutes at, at the bench. Now, I'm gonna, not going to be so quick to throw things away like I was last time, because sometimes I run across items that I cannot identify. I have thrown them away, and somebody says, oh, you shouldn't have thrown that away. It was, that was a so-and-so. And I'm, oh, I, I didn't know what it was, so I pitched it. Uh, it's too late now, so I won't pitch anything until I get uh, information from, uh, from the viewers. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, let's get started here with box one, and uh, make sure you go and see my video where I meet Jimmy DeResta. What a character and then he sent me a bunch of stuff and I'm going to show you that in another video but I really only bought this box I didn't pay much for it because of this keyless chuck and I hope it's a good one but I see I thought from a distance it was an Albrecht but it's a it's a ROM from Germany marked AMF so with the number two Morse taper but we'll see we'll see how that works out this is a Williams six inch C clamp in good condition I love the Wilson, yeah, you know, the Williams, Armstrong, and Proto are my favorite. That is made of aluminum. Almost looks like it's for a bridge board, but it's, of course it's not. This, well, they're just a bar of seven eight steel. It looks like. I was ready to throw this out, and I realized that it is a boring bar. But on this end, someone turned it down, and we got this massive boring bar with a tiny little grooving bit, so figure that out. I think that's probably it. Extension cords. Not sure what that is. It says Kurt two and five. Oh, that's something. That's a trailer hitch, I guess. Got some manuals. And charts. Nothing of value there. On to the next one. Next we have three Hewitt indexes. And this one is letters. And I did need a good letter one, but I see here that there are, no there are none missing but the beauty of this these are stubbies and you know how I love my stubby bits so there's the alphabet in stubbies obviously he did a lot of work on a bridge port and he knew the the pain and disheartening effort of lowering the, 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 the knee so there's stubby letter bits now these are not drill bits these are tap and drill indexes, national course. So there we have a tap and a and a drill in each size, starting at half. There's something missing there, going down to 832. Similarly, the other one is national fine. Looks like everything has been used, probably. Starting at half 20 and going down to 640. So this is a real nice batch of, of tools. They weren't cheap. 
not liking these cheap socket sets. But I know that there are people in other countries and so on that maybe that they would like something like that, because you're not going to get it. We're too far away. I like this little jack, screw jack. I don't know what, it's, what I'll use it for, but here we have a duck bill, and we got several Stilson wrenches. That's all really junk. Some more snips. And long nose pliers in rough shape, foreign made. Nothing good there at all, except for the jack. Here's a rhetorical question for you. What is the phenomenon that makes a man want a box like this? And this was not particularly cheap either. But in this box we got we got dowel pins, we got cap screws, we got all kinds of countersinks. There's a die holder. Oh, a lot of countersinks. A lot of them. Some fittings. Now, why would a man keep a broken die? Why would you do that? Let's see. A lot of countersinks. There's cutters. A tubing cutter. All kinds of one-inch dies. Why would you keep that? More uniflutes. Big center drills. Oh, that's a tap follower. Spring loaded. A lot of center drills in there. Oh, gee, all kinds. Some taps. Deburring tool. I don't know what that is. And quite a few taps here. Even a pipe tap. So I think this is a nice box, even though I probably have most of what's in here already. But I'm glad I bought it. Next box. There's a, I call this a die pry bar. I don't see any name on there besides the owner. Piece of drill rod. Several wrenches, but they're all generic. Sears, Fuller. Oh, there's a Craftsman. Some more calipers. I believe that those are probably Sterrett. Another one kind of rusty. You know what that is. A roller chain. Pulley. One, two, three. Outside calipers. Seems to me this is for pulling roller chain together, if I remember correctly. A center finding head without the essential parts. Some bearings, bearings, screwdriver. Yeah, a little craftsman. Three eighths. Under warranty. This is not meant to be a bragging session. And a chisel for hammer and chisel mechanics. Not a great box, but a few things in here worthwhile. Next, another mixed job lot here. We got some indicators. No crystal on that. All seem to work. Now some of this stuff, did I mention it, will be on eBay eventually. Things that I can't use or have duplicates of. That one looks pretty good. Down here we got a magnifier. Empty. Oh, here's a Sterrett. Huh. Virtually brand new Sterrett center gauge. And a general center gauge. In here is... Dial caliper, it's a craftsman, six inch. Looks 
and rule, decimal chart. Again, stare it. You know what? This is a wiggler set. There's three points and there's the fourth. So that's a that's a stir it with the box with some sickening earplugs. I can't stand to touch something like that. I'm sure you can either. Here's some extra cutters for a deburring tool. Several of those. I can't tell whether they're sharp or not. Some indicator parts. That's for an indicator dovetail. Dentist mirror. I don't like seeing these dental tools. All right, guess that's about it. Not a real great box, but some nice stera tools in there. Of course, I'm like a bomb. I can see a stera box from a hundred yards away through my cataracts. Here's another junk box. Got a couple flashlights. Huh, actually work. That's surprising. Oh, little junk. A lot, lot of magic markers. I got to go through those and see which ones are dead and pens and Allen wrenches. There's one of those little spill proof oil cans. I'll be darned. Here is a hardened triangle. Possibly shop made, apprentice project, not sure. A surface gauge. I don't know if it's a stare it. It's missing some parts. Dividers. Pro Why is it there's protractors in every box that I've run across? Scissors. More pens. Guy ate lunch at work, I guess. And more Allen wrenches and an antifreeze. Oh, that's for batteries, I think. Okay, not a great box. I hope I didn't pay more than two bucks for it. I'll say one thing for this guy. He had a lot of indicators. Here's a tech lock might be new I believe it is that's probably new dial gauge here's a compact that looks like it might be good yeah that was a good buy Several of these on the magnetic base. Two magnetic bases there. That one looks a little beat up. Two jacks. Not sure what that is or if it goes with this. If anybody knows what these are, let me know. I see a name on it. Deep OL, it says on it. I don't know. I'm stumped on those. And here is one of these uh, grinding vices. Used, but looks pretty good. And I do not have one of these. Heavy, very heavy. All right, not a bad box. I like that box. Another box, here's a set of Letter stamps look to be eighth inch and the numbers as well. Not even going to open that. This is a craftsman dial indicator. Seems to work all right. And I hear something rattling around, so there's an accessory for it. And here. Boy, that's a beat up, beat up box. It's got a stare at name on there, or part number. A 
Oh, the lens came off. This thing's been around the block. But it still works with all of the doodads and attachments. Probably easily repairable. Stare it. All right, that's it for that box. I had to buy this $3 box simply so I could have this set of balls here. Now why I need those, I don't know, but these are from West Clocks. I told you there were some West Clocks items there. And these, I don't know what's in there, but can't be much. Some of them are empty. And these are big gauges still in the wax from West Clocks for those bomb fuses. I'll take those off and show you those sometime. Worthless. It's really scrap iron, but it's kind of interesting. There's a Steelman Bendelite Pro. I think this is a proctoscope. It needs batteries. It feels kind of light. It doesn't, doesn't work now. Maybe it never will. There's a Sterrett indicator holder. Long reach. Craftsman 2 inch micrometer. Seen better days, but I bet it still works. This is what attracted me to this box. Here's a set of Sterrett adjustable parallels. That's a nice score in itself right there. I think that co would cost about $50 or more. Shop made sign bar, 5 inch. With a man's name on it. Protractor. Here's a, I should say drill gauge. Thread gauge. Indicol, I call these. Maybe this is a knockoff, but there's quite a nice indicator on there. Just laying in a box. I don't like instruments treated like that. They're a bad boring bar, deburring tool. This is some kind of flex coupling. If anybody knows what those are for, let me know, because there were several of those. Never seen one. Hones, more hones. A singular V block marked Schultz level. I wish there was another one, but I don't see another one. That doesn't even appear to be the clamp. Tweezers. A couple steric gauges. Feeler gauge. Somebody tell me what this is, or is it homemade? It looks familiar to me, but I'm not sure what it is, unless it's a, a stop that goes on a machinist vise or a machine vise. Bunch of starter drills, scriber, well used. Why would you keep a bent screw? There's a good screw there. And stare at edge finer, but inside of it are, in fact, five edge finders. Hmm. The guy did a lot of edge finding, didn't he? He was living on the edge. And a bunch of junk taps and so on. All right, fairly good box. Here's a 25 pound box. I don't know what I paid for it, but a nice copper pounder. All kinds of taps, larger taps. They all feel quite sharp. And I know they shouldn't be stored this way, but that's the way I bought them. Three jacks. More big taps. Steel stock, you know what that is. You know, scrap price on steel is so low, it just isn't worth even taking down 
to the scrapyard anymore. High speed steel, 3 8 by 8 inches. Never seen the sole that way. And then in here we have a lot of high speed steel and carbide. I think all used. Take it back, they're the brand new. I'm pretty sure most of this stuff will end up on eBay because I've got so much of it already. A lot of high speed steel here. But it's all been ground, but that doesn't mean it isn't usable. Another new one. Boy, there's a chunk. Oh, that's why the box was so heavy. That guy must have done some pretty heavy work. This was so heavy, my wife wouldn't carry it to the car. I had to do it myself. Poor boy. I wasn't going to show this because I've already showed it. shown it. And I never heard of this company. But my son-in-law just came in here and he said, you're in trouble. I'm there, well, why? He said, well, look, look at the label. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. That's as bad as me and the, and the Navy. U.S. government property. Eh. Well, I don't know if there's anything missing out of there, because usually there's some clamps on here. But, again, here's the label. Boy, that base is heavy. i got to get on the other side. This is a heavy unit. There's that. And it is uh, imperial measurement, but I'll swear this bottom must weigh 10 pounds. It's, it's just incredibly heavy. But I had to laugh. When the boy held this up in the auction wagon, he had it upside down because he was clueless. But why wouldn't he be? Oh, you know what? The backside, this is kind of different. The backside is metric. Very interesting. As I said, a little bit bigger than what I normally do, but, and in the case, so, there you go. This box of wrenches was only $2.50, and I really bought it for this box of ignition wrenches, but, and I thought it was all junk, and most of this is junk, although I see a, a Napa, and a New Britain, and a Thorson, and a few others, but there was 13 Craftsman wrenches in there, which kind of surprised me, but, the thing that surprised me the most is here's a genuine snap-on wrench. Five, nine thirty seconds. That's a thirty dollar wrench. But this is why I bought the box. Not, these are ignition wrenches, Craftsman. Not that I do any ignition work except on my tractor, nor does anyone else unless they work on uh, an antique cars. But it's, I like those small wrenches. So that was a bargain at $250 compared to what I paid for some of these other boxes. But some of this is just scrap iron. For instance, that. No, that's a Thorson. Kind of rusty, though. I'm pretty sure this is a piece of junk, although it's a Bosch and Lom. Some kind of microscope or something. But it would require a monitor or something in order to, to read it. Frank Bartles, Bosch and Lom, probably junk, and there's a five pound weight, but I think there's some interesting things there, there's another weight, two more, the scale, but in these ball testers, oh here's a bunch of gauge blocks, bezel clamps. Those are all dial indicator parts, I believe. There's something for brown and sharp. Lock nuts. Hey, here's another one of those brown and sharp ball anvil. Remember that? I had one before. Ratchet stops for micrometers. All kinds of spare parts. Probes, contacts, 
might be a few things of, of value there. Now if I can get this Dutch Master box open. You see this was a job lot I think that was from that internet auction and didn't sell or didn't get picked up or something. But in this Dutch Masters, look at all of the indicator holders and some of these are there. But there must be a dozen of them. That's the last word. These are from West Clocks. All kinds of those. And we have here all kinds of indicator backs. Now why there are dozens and dozens of these I do not know. Other indicator parts. Those are for gauges. And many things I do not recognize. A bunch of cap screws. But kind of an interesting box. Just two boxes left. And at this time I often wonder if anybody is actually still watching me. But there we have three different spanners. Got a chuck, but it looks like it's a Supreme. File card. Some drifts. Lifting eye. Several chuck keys. T-nut. There's a little chuck like you could hold in the milling machine, but it looks inferior. T-slot cleaner. Tiny screwdrivers. Interesting little box. And last but not least, here's the last box. I thought that was a magnet at first, or I wouldn't have even brought it. I don't know what it is. But it's not a magnet. Regulator. Here's a box. Gauge blocks. Some of them missing, but I thought I saw them laying in the bottom of the box. You know, at an auction, people pick something like that up, upside down. They open it upside down. Gauge, plug gauge. Again, these are West Clocks items. I said that probably. Empty. Federal measuring micro microscope bulbs. Looks like a full box of four. More envelopes with something in them. I don't know what. Empty. I don't know what that is. Some kind of probe. There's a thread gauge probably for an artillery fuse. Johansson. Roughness specimens. I had some of those before. Tried to sell them on eBay and nobody wanted them, so I guess that's junk. I don't see the other little gauge blocks. But in here, this says anvils for inspection department. I do not know what these are. Tell me if you know what these are so I don't throw them away. And then on the other one, it looks like a ball. And I think there's two of them. Foam has disintegrated. That's the ball. And if it is correct, this the box says... Yeah, it's a Mitutoyo box, but I don't know if those are Mitutoyo parts. If anybody knows what those are, let me know in the comments. So that's not a very good box. Well, that concludes this auction. I hope you enjoyed coming to the auction with me. and It wasn't too long and drawn out, but uh, I had a big day plus making this video. So 
I had a good time. Hope you did too. This is Tubal Kane saying so long, and I'll see you in my next video.